Hey everybody, James here, formerly of the Football Manager Whiz Kids. Now, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, if you haven't seen my previous video the other day, it's just explaining that I'm coming back to the YouTube scene, going to try and come back into the Football Manager community slowly but surely and get back in and involved in all the action that I used to love. Now, I haven't been around for about five, six months now, taking a break, and now I'm back. I'm going to give it another go with a series on Football Manager 2017 and this is the club I've chosen. Montrose FC in the Scottish League 2 sponsored by Ladbrokes and we're going to play with them and this is going to be called The Homecoming because this is where I spent all my years growing up. Born in Dundee but grown up and raised in Montrose. Small town, 15,000 people in between Dundee and Aberdeen and hopefully you can enjoy this journey and come along with it and see what we can do and progress and hopefully one day make it to the top of the Scottish tier. Now today's video is just going to be talking about the squad, what we have at our disposal. Of course it's a part-time squad. It's going to be tough to bring players in and there's not going to be much money thrown about until later on in the series, down the years and seasons and hopefully when we can actually spend money on players. So it's all about picking up freebies, bringing in loan players and trials. So we'll have a look at that, have a look to expand the squad, see who we can look to get rid of, talk about the formation that we're going to play, which is potentially going to be basic, as it's a basic level of football. And we're just going to get to know the club a bit better before we crack on properly in episode 2 with the actual season campaign underway. So here we are, quick look at my profile, 27 years old, 1589 of course is my date of birth, that is correct, first year I've been able to put it into Football Manager actually, born in Dundee, no caps, no goals etc for the national team, starting on a very basic zero qualifications and a Sunday league football experience, of course I did play football myself in my younger days in the youth football category. As you can see, the attributes are very low, as low as possible. There's nothing we've really done. It's very basic. We're going to start from the very bottom and try and work our way up. As you can see, not much else to show you on here. Worst opinions on me are Darren Dodds. I believe he's the manager of Brecon. John Coughlin, Dick Campbell, I think, is the manager of Forfar. Those clubs, Forfar and Brecon, very local in the Angus area as is our broth along with Montrose. So that's kind of three derbies that we would have if we potentially play those clubs throughout this series. Jim Chapman, also not a fan of me. As you can see on the right hand side, not experienced any press conference yet. I haven't actually done a single thing in terms of the game yet. Sunday League football experience, and favourite club is Newcastle. My family are all born and bred Newcastle. I support Newcastle. And if you've been subscribed to this channel for a long time, you will know fine well that is the club that I support. First things first, as always, to try and boost myself, try and get some more qualifications, try and become more of a quality coach slash manager. I try to get myself sent on a qualification course and that has been funded by the chairman, John Crawford. Great news and a great way to kick off the series. In the same meeting with the chairman, we've tried to get a trial date and that is exactly what's been granted, which is also good news because we can get a chance to see who's free on the market, players that would be willing to come to this level and see who we can bring in and hopefully add a bit of quality for this level to the squad. And again, continued in this same meeting with John Crawford, more good news being granted, a senior affiliated club, so hopefully one of the top clubs in the top division in Scotland, or certainly in the second division, can become an affiliated club, and we can maybe pinch a few loan players to help boost our chances this season and in the future. So on the financial side of things, the club is currently spending £4,100 per week on wages, but should we boost all that wage budget that we have left over, which is around £800. We can actually have £32,000 budget to spend, which is, believe it or not, actually massive for this level, but it's not about how much money you have, it's about being able to attract certain players. So even if we do have that money, it's probably irrelevant as we will not really be able to spend it apart from on wages. So the key thing is bringing in players who want to play for the club quality, but being able to offer them a reasonable wage to get them to stay at the club. So a little small background check on the Montrose FC. Founded in 1879, semi-professional club, or part-time basically. Regional reputation, one start, and financially we are okay. As I've said, Angus Derby's would potentially be four for our growth or breaking very close and all in the Angus area, very local to each other. Key employees, myself, the manager, Ross Campbell is the current captain. We'll have a look at that captaincy situation on base, who will play, who will leave the club. 
Vice captain is Terry Masson and the key player is Matty Smith. The kit, naturally Montrose play in the royal blue which has always been their hometown colour as long as I've remembered and red is currently the away kit. Sponsored by Nike. Play at Lynx Park which is a synthetic AstroTurf pitch. It's very good. It used to be terrible pitch but since they got that in it cost a lot of money for the local community and the local club to put down. But it is really fantastic. Been to see it many times myself. 4,936 capacity at Lynx Park. That, my friends, I would say is if you squeeze every single person into there standing because the main stand, I would say, only holds about a 1,000 people and the rest would be standing round about side. It's a decent little stadium for the level. Good condition of pitch and... Sorry, a great condition of pitch, good condition of stadium. But it is a very much local stadium, small time. But it's very good for what you get at that level. And not many teams at that level will get to play on such quality, to be fair. More background information on the team. As you can see, media prediction is 7th. So we'll have a look at that come the end of the transfer window. Or come the start of the season when we've got a much better squad. And we've put together our own things and... Hopefully we can surpass that media expectation. Put some expectation on ourselves, of course. The estimated value of the club is £130,000. I'm pretty sure you could get it for a lot less than that in real life. Average ticket price is £12. That's probably about right for me, and in my opinion, it's daylight robbery. Double that, you could get to almost Premier League game, albeit a cheap seat. Legends of the club, Gary Wood, I remember him very well, goal scorer, scored a lot of goals in two times he played for the club, or over two spells should I say. Davy Latter, a goalkeeper, and a few other names in there, Bobby Lingston, Willie Johnson, Alex Stewart, Ian Stewart, Davy Latter again, Les Barr and Gary Murray. Icons of the club, Martin Boyle, who played for Dundee, now plays for Hibernian, Marvin Andrews, a lot of you may know him, played for Rangers, Stevie Kerrigan, legend of Montrose, and Kenny Cameron. On the facility side of things, we have an adequate corporate facility in the corporate facilities. Training facilities, average, and an average youth facility. The youth stadium is Lynx Park, as well as the training ground. That is what happens in this level. The club just train on their own pitch. Of course, as I said, it's AstroTurf, so it doesn't get damaged anyway. Junior coaching is adequate, and the youth recruitment is fairly basic. So as some of you may know, the struggle is real at this level. Very few full-time coaching staff, as it's a part-time club. As you can see, all of the player story staff here are full-time contracts. Myself, the player assistant manager is Ross Campbell. He's also the captain, as I showed you. John Crawford is the chairman. Jim Butter, former goalkeeper of Montrose, recently came back to become a goalkeeping coach. George Stewart is the head physio. And we have two scouts, Robert Ogg and Ron Marquise. We're definitely going to look to see the chairman if we can expand the amount of staff we have in each position. If not, I will definitely look to juggle it about and see if we can bring in more higher reputation players to help me, of course, the inexperienced manager along the way on this journey. Although it's undecided yet and we will have to look at our squad, especially after we've brought some more names in, but when we play this low league or lower depth of football manager, I prefer to keep things very basic. Whereas if I'm playing upper, sort of in the Premier League or... In a top standard level. I like to mess about with it. Try some new roles. Try some new formations. Something a bit fancy. Just to try and enjoy the game. And get some more satisfaction out of it. But for me. And in my opinion. When you're playing in the lower depths of any nation. I would always say. Back to basic. Stick to basic. And get the basics working. Before trying something new and extravagant. But. Who knows. We'll see what the squad's like. When it comes to the start of the season. But. Right now. I reckon I'm going to go down the 4-4-2 route or the 4-4-1-1. Nothing too fancy, very basic and hopefully it works. But we'll get into this more in the next episode when we come to play our first game of the season. So before we get into the squad as it currently stands, here are the friendly competition games we will play. Aberdeen, it'll be a tough game, Aberdeen. Currently, you'd say the second best team in Scotland, so we'll see what kind of squad they bring to Lynx Park. We'll then play Broxburn Athletic away from home at the Albion Park, Penrith away from home at Frenchfield Stadium, and finally against Socky away from home at Beechwood Park. Those will be the four games before we kick off the season against an unknown challenger in the Challenge Cup first round, and then the league campaign gets off to a tough, tough start away to Clyde. I believe Barry Ferguson has just left them as manager, or certainly was recently their manager, so that will be a tough, tough game. And the second game of the season against Arbroath, 
the derby. That will be a big one, that will be a cracker and that will be a very important game of the season so early on. So here is the squad guys, it's quite a big squad for this level. We have got four players in on loan and we've also got about four youngsters out on loan. So we're going to quickly run through each player individually in a very brief segment and we will move on to the under 20s, show you what they're all about and then we'll wrap up this video. So first up is Alan Fleming, goalkeeper, 32 years of age, got some experience behind him, coming in from local club and rivals are both. You'll find that with a lot of the players at this level, guys, a lot of them move around the four Angus clubs. As I've said, Brecon, Forfar, Arbroath and Montrose, a lot of them tend to play a lot of their football, stay part-time and just go around each club and Alan Fleming is one of those. For me, this guy, Gary Fraser, 29 years old, he is definitely, definitely pinning our hopes on this guy to score the goals for us. Looks pretty decent for this level. 14 finishing, first touch of 11, penalty taking 12, work rate 16. He's got few decent mental attributes to go with that finishing of 14 and hopefully Gary Fraser can bring me a lot of goals this season. I'll definitely be relying on him. Next up is Kerr Hay, who's actually been doing okay in real life for the team recently, finishing of 12. Determination of 12, work rate of 12, off the ball of 13. He's going to be decent and he looks okay for this level, so I look forward to using him. Next up is Chris Hegarty. The right back has got a few attributes that are decent, more along the terms of the bravery, determination, teamwork, work rate. I'm not quite sure where they're getting the 15 penalty taken from. Natural fitness is 15. Probably going to be a player that will be more bit part or on the bench for me. A youngster that I don't see probably being involved much is Lloyd Hester. Can't see him being involved. Not got enough attributes to convince me that he's going to do anything for me this season. Now Callum McDonald is a central defender. Now he looks really, really good for this level. Heading of 13, passing of 11, tackling of 12, determination of 11, leadership, work rate, composure, jump and reach and natural fitness. All good. I reckon he could be a good player for this level. Long-term servant Terry Massey, the 27-year-old, got a lot of good attributes. Mentally, he's excellent for this division. He's got some decent physicals and some decent technicals. But in this division, mentally, I reckon he's amongst the best in his position in this league. He will definitely be used and he can play in a various amount of positions. Another one with not much attributes to really back up anything that he can be involved not a lot to really shout about here. Technique, flair, work rate are decent, as is his pace, but most of it is bang average. We'll see how he gets on in pre-season and in the friendlies, and we'll see how we could use him potentially in the season to come. But I'm yet to be convinced by him in terms of his attributes. But again, guys, a lot of players in Football Manager perform above the attributes given to them by the game. Much in the same boat as Hester and McLeod, Kieran McWalter doesn't really have any outstanding physicals. Is Physical game is probably the best area of his play. Acceleration is decent, natural fitness and pace are decent. Teamwork is decent, work rate is decent, but other than that, guys, he's not got a lot of great attributes to shout about. Probably going to be our number one for the season. Jordan Miller looks pretty good for this level. 19 years old, I think he could be a decent purchase, so hopefully he can be a rock-solid goalkeeper for us and hopefully not concede too many, which we tend to do at this level on the game. Formerly of Rangers, a decent player, Greg Pascasio, can play central defence or at right back. One I'm really going to look to use. Heading is good, tackling is good, work rate, determination, composure, anticipation, jumping reach and stamina are all pretty good for this level and I reckon he could be a decent player for us. As you've seen on the information screen at the club point, this guy, Matty Smith, on loan from Dundee United, has been seen and identified as one of our better players, so hopefully we can take advantage of that loan from Dundee United and we can use him and he can get us a few goals. Left back Andrew Steves, 21 years old, someone I think is really, really good for this level, tackling of 12. Mentally he's one of the best in the league I would say, physically he's pretty good as well and he's got dribbling of 9 and crossing of 10, which hopefully if he does manage to get forward he can contribute to some goals for us. Looks a really good left back. Next up is a 4-4 legend, Chris Templeman. Much like Gary Fraser, this guy and those two in particular, I'm going to be looking for them to fight us 
in the goals and hopefully get us into at least the playoff spot is what you're hoping for. But we'll discuss the season expectations in the next episode. But he's got a lot of good attributes. Mentally, he's good. Physically, he's decent. Technically, he's pretty good. So I think he's going to be really good for us. And those two, Templeman and Fraser, I reckon they can form some form of partnership to get us a lot of goals. You're always going to concede at this level. You need to score, and I believe we've got the firepower up front to do that. Young Welsh centre midfielder on loan from Aberdeen. Of course, we're going to play them pretty soon. Dylan Thomas looks okay. Passing is good. Decision making is good. Leadership and work rate are good. And physically, he's okay. Again, if we're getting him on loan from a club like Aberdeen, he's going to be much, much superior in this level of football than he would be from the club he's coming from. So hopefully he can do some decent football for us. Amassing over 200 games in his time with the club, Paul Watson is next up. Now, he's got some OK technicals, not very good physically, but his best part of his game is mentally. It seems to be that way with a lot of players at this level. 29 years old now, might keep him around for the experience in terms of side of things. But I don't know how much first team football he's going to play. We'll see again and how he gets on in pre-season. Next up is Graham Webster with finishing a 14 which surprises me for a centre midfielder. This guy again is probably going to be a bit part but who knows. It's all about keeping players fresh, rotating the team. Of course you've got injuries and suspensions that could get in the way. And we are just a part-time club, so it's going to be tough to juggle. We're going to need a pretty big squad, and hopefully Graham Webster can be a part of that. I don't see him being a first-team mainstay player, but who knows what will happen in pre-season, and who knows who will impress. Next up is Matty Allen on loan from Dundee. Looks like he could be a decent player. His heading of 12, tackling of 11, teamwork of 12, as is bravery, and he's got some decent physicals in there as well. I reckon he could do a decent job for us. Next up is Gregor Anderson. Much stats compared to the last player as well. They're pretty similar to be honest. So again, there's going to be a lot of competition for that central defensive partnership berth. And I reckon he could be in for a shout with playing. It's going to be a tough call who's going to play there. That's probably the most strengthened area of the squad. So who knows who will play there. It's all about performing in pre-season. And it's all about getting that chance and taking it. Next up, also on loan from Dundee United, is Cami Ballantyne. Looks rubbish, technically, but that's not his game and not his way of playing football on the game. So, mentally, he's decent and physically, he's pretty good. That's the aspect we're going to use him. Could play central defensive midfielder or he could play centre-back. Who knows where we're going to use him, but he does look decent. He looks like a guy that will do the job he's there to do and nothing fancy. Next up, another central defender and a mouthful of a name. It's Michael Bolachevecki. Not sure if I said that right, probably butchered it. But again, he brings a lot of experience to the club. Good mentally, okay physically. Again, technically, he's not going to be very great. But a lot of experience and someone that could come in very handy amongst the younger players. Next up is a player who looks really decent for this level. It's Liam Callahan. Now, he's got corners of 12 Crossing of 12, long shots of 12, passing of 13. Now, he looks pretty decent. You don't often get players with good technical attributes as that at this level of play, particular in a part-time capacity that the club is at. So, really happy with that and looking forward to using him. Just as I was saying, technically there's not very many good players at this level. Left-back Ian Campbell is probably best technically in his overall attributes. Pretty rubbish elsewhere. Physically, he's dreadful. Mentally, he's pretty poor. But technically, he looks decent. 30 years old, so quite experienced. Moving on to Ross Campbell. He is absolutely dreadful technically. Physically, he's awful. And mentally, he's got three attributes. Probably a player we won't look to use at all. Ryan Ferguson, a reasonable player. Got some decent technicals. Mentally, he's pretty good. Pretty poor physically. But someone I reckon will use a lot from the bench or possibly a starting berth. So that just about wraps things up guys, that's the squad. We're going to look and see who we can look to shift out, players to bring in, of course we're going to have the trial day, try and bring in loans, potentially from our feeder club that we'll get in a few weeks time. But first and foremost, when it comes to players, we're going to be looking at the out of contract players and try and bring them in. That cost nothing, we've got a decent wage budget and hopefully we can look to bring some players in by episode 2. So that's the opening episode done guys, thank you for getting back to me in terms of the video that I've done, 
make him a comeback. So hopefully you can enjoy this. Come on the journey with me as I look to play as my hometown club, Montrose. Now, this has been a long episode, around 20 minutes. Hopefully we'll get the episodes cut down to about, I would say... 10 to 12 minutes per episode so hopefully that's not too long for you and it also keeps you involved and keeps you enjoying it and wanting to come back every few days and get involved with me if you're enjoying it or you're gonna got any suggestions or any help you want to put forward or be constructive in your feedback say in the comments if you haven't subscribed please do and hopefully you can enjoy this while i am enjoying it i will drop one or two episodes a week it's got not going to be anything too pushy too in your face just casual play and recording while I play, of course, and hopefully you enjoy it like I do. Again, guys, I'll cut the episode down, so hopefully it's more reasonable watching time for you. And thanks, guys. I'm going to try my very best to come back and hopefully enjoy Football Manager again because I used to love this game, and the last six months I've really not even looked at it. I've barely even clocked up an hour on Football Manager 2017, whereas I was clocking up thousands on previous games, as you know. Again guys, thanks for watching, I've been James, you've been brilliant and I'll see you again in episode 2 with Montrose FC. Bye.